Greetings all, I am Seminary Scholar and this is my channel where I discuss the beliefs of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. To preface, I have attended the Church of Seminary and Institute programs and I am going to be referring to official church documents. I am not, however, an official representative of the church. There's no one vetting these comments and making sure that they are, are entirely in alignment. I am familiar with the material, I have studied it my whole life. I am trying my best to make it accurate but it's not being vetted, and this is um, ultimately fallible. Um, with that out of the way, uh, to this week I'm doing another one of my perspective essays, where I pick a belief, uh, doctrine, or uh, principle that we hold in our church, and I explore it a bit, and I elaborate on it for the benefit of you, the audience. And this week I wanted to talk about something very specific. And that is ch child baptism or infant baptism, uh, more specifically. But um, uh, and to be clear, uh, in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, we don't subscribe to the belief that infants need to be baptized in order to be saved. Um, we believe that there is an age of accountability, which is eight years old. Why it is eight years old, I could not tell you. Um, I don't think that that's something that's been revealed or that there's an official stance from the church on. That is just the age that has been given f by revelation that for us to work with and act upon. And we believe that after age eight, it becomes acceptable to for a child to choose to enter into the covenant of baptism. Um, I want to be clear about something. We don't believe that immediately after the age of eight, uh, children all of a sudden become accountable and are all of a sudden, it's a situation where if they die after the age of eight, they are also automatically condemned. Uh, we believe it's more like a gradient, that after the age of eight, children begin to gain more understanding and responsibility and accountability, and then they are, they are not automatically condemned. No one's automatically condemned. <laughs> um, Heavenly Father judges on a case-by-case -case basis. And he understands that context is a thing, um, but but that's that's the general thing that we believe. And the main reference for most of these beliefs comes from a chapter very late in the Book of Mormon. Um, it's Moroni eight, and in this let in this chapter, uh, it's the the account is in the Book of Moroni, but the. Uh, epistle or the letter is written by the prophet Mormon, so it's a little bit confusing. Um, but in this account, uh, Mormon uh, talks very poignantly on the subject of infant baptism, and he makes the argument that because children are not aware of the laws, because they don't have the ability to understand whether or not they are obeying, whether or not they are defying, what they are obeying, what they are defying, what the consequences are, because they don't have the ability to understand all of these things, they are then not held accountable for uh, the keeping or the breaking of these commandments. Furthermore, children are usually not in full control of their home situation and are usually not given the choice to choose to be baptized regardless of what their parents think. Um, and so for these reasons, among others, I'm sure, it isn't, it is not acceptable to believe that a just and merciful God, indeed a deity of justice and mercy, would condemn one child based on the fact that they didn't have this ordinance that they did not really understand and had no real power to participate in if their parents were contrary to it and then save another child because their parents happened to know the relevance of the ordinance and happened to have the ability to go through and give them that ordinance. Now, to be clear, if you are someone who believes that infant baptism is important and it's a very relevant topic, I am not trying to say that your beliefs are invalid. I am trying to present my beliefs and the, this is a very relevant um, reference and resource that we use in, to illustrate our beliefs to other people. I am not trying to attack anyone's beliefs. Uh, if you disagree with that, uh, this argument, you are, you are perfectly free, right, and right to do that. Um, 
I'm not trying to constrain anyone to believe a certain way or say, oh, this argument is so foolproof that no one can possibly disbelieve it. I'm just presenting what I believe and using the tools at my disposal to communicate why I believe this. Um, but yes, we do not believe that infant baptism is valid. And we also, and we believe that it's even kind of dangerous to propagate that because it suggests an inconsistency in God's nature, that somehow a just and merciful God could do something that from our perspective is so unjust and so unmerciful. Um, we believe instead that children under the age of accountability are actually automatically exalted because um, we believe that, and this ties into our, our belief of why mortality even exists, why it is a state that we occupy. And we believe that it's that, that mortality exists to educate us. Uh, mortality exists so that we can learn and grow. We believe that we were spirits before and that we agreed to come to mortality and to learn the lessons that it would teach us. And we believe that those who die under the age of accountability are those same spirits that were so exceptional that they did not need to be tested. They did not need to learn the lessons of mortality because they were already so beyond, they were already so spiritually advanced and so spiritually mature that they just didn't need the test. All they needed was to acquire, acquire a mortal body which could then be resurrected and exalted. Um, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because that is a profound source of doctrinal comfort that is that we offer to people who who do lose children who are very young um, and i and i think that if if i'm going to be talking about the subject there's no way i'm going to leave that out because that is a critical piece of doctrine for me and for so many people and it's and it's something that makes something that is so awful make a little bit more sense. Um, but yes, thank you very much for tuning in and listening to my comments and on the beliefs of my church. Um, if you enjoyed this, if you found it insightful or helpful, um, feel free to subscribe. Uh, but otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day regardless, and I, I hope that this has helped you. Um, thank you.